Imagine a beautiful sunny day. You're zooming down the highway, wind in your hair, sun on your face. You want to speed up, you push the gas pedal. You want to slow down, you take your foot off or hit the brakes. Simple, right? Now think of the economy as that car. When things are going well, the car is moving along smoothly. But when something disrupts the normal flow of the economy, the engine might malfunction. So, what happens then? Well, what would you do if your actual car was malfunctioning? You'd take it to a mechanic, right? Unfortunately, there's no mechanic for the economy, but there are some internal and external forces that can fix the economy. We've talked a lot about internal market forces like scarcity, the profit motive, and the laws of supply and demand. And those are powerful forces. Much of the time, they can work to benefit producers and consumers, establishing equilibrium prices and encouraging innovation and efficiency. But sometimes things get too far out of balance. Inflation hits, unemployment spirals out of control, or wages stagnate. So if the market can't fix itself, what or who can step in to take action? Meet the Federal Reserve, or the Fed. If the economy is like a car, the Fed is like the car's computer system, regulating and ensuring everything's running smoothly. You might want to take a moment and get your PDF. There's a graphic organizer that you can fill out as we go along. The Federal Reserve is the central bank of the United States. What do you think would be the role of a central bank in a market economy? Well, in the U.S., the Fed regulates the money supply and clears financial transactions between member banks. What does that mean? Regulating the money supply means that they can control the amount of money circulating in our economy. Clearing financial transactions means ensuring that money can flow safely and efficiently between banks. Through these two main functions, the Fed has the power to accelerate the economy or to pump the brakes. They can also take the wheel to settle things down and keep it stable. And if a bank's in a crunch and in danger of running out of money, the Fed is there, lending them some money to cover short-term deficits. Economists often refer to the Fed as a lender of last resort for banks. So, when does the Fed step in to fix the malfunctioning engine of our economy? What economic indicators does it watch to see when the economy is in trouble? You probably won't be surprised that the Fed tracks a variety of economic indicators, but they mostly fall into three buckets. Inflation or spending, growth, and employment. To track inflation and spending, what might the Fed watch? That's right, the CPI is a major indicator, along with spending in areas like retail, housing, and vehicles. By watching purchasing and sales patterns, the Fed can track changes in overall supply and demand that might show problems that need to be addressed. To track growth, of course the primary indicator is real GDP. Recall that real GDP is adjusted for inflation, so it's a more accurate measure of economic growth or decline over time. Purchasing and sales patterns can also indicate economic growth. The stock market can also be a useful measure of growth and consumer confidence. To track employment, the Fed watches wages, job growth, and unemployment statistics. What's the point of all this tracking? 
Well, if growth is slow, spending and sales are down, and unemployment is rising, the Fed might want to step in to speed things up and stimulate the economy. This could help prevent or reverse a serious recession. On the other hand, if growth is high and prices are rising faster than wages, inflation can be problematic. The Fed may step in to slow down the economy. Now, it's not always quite that clear cut, unfortunately. Imagine you were a decision maker at the Fed. You've just received a report that unemployment rates are rising and growth is slowing down, but retail sales are booming. What do you do? Well, there's no one right answer here. This sort of mixed data is exactly what the Fed grapples with. While booming retail sales might suggest consumers are confident, rising unemployment and slowing growth indicate possible trouble. The Fed will have to weigh the benefits of taking action against the possible negative consequences. So, the Fed can choose to speed up or slow down the economy, but how? They do this by using something called monetary policy. Monetary policy is the actions and decisions a country's central bank takes to control the supply and demand of money and credit. Now, the idea of supply and demand of money might sound a little weird, but it's actually crucial for the Fed. By increasing the money supply or the amount of money in an economy, the Federal Reserve can try to stimulate economic activity and speed up growth. On the flip side, by decreasing the money supply, the Federal Reserve aims to slow down economic activity. There are three main ways the Fed can adjust the money supply in either direction. Change the reserve requirement for banks, adjust the discount rate, or conduct open market operations. Each of these tools can be used to increase money supply and stimulate the economy, or to decrease supply and slow things down. The first tool is to change the reserve requirements for banks. Think back to our lesson on banks. What is the reserve requirement? That's right, it's the amount of money from their deposits that banks must hold on to in order to meet regulations and provide for withdrawals. To increase supply and speed up the economy, the Fed can lower the reserve requirement. This allows banks to loan out more of the money in its accounts, and that leads to more spending and investment. To decrease supply and slow down, the Fed can increase the reserve requirement. This restricts the amount banks can lend, which slows down borrowing and spending from businesses and consumers. This decreased overall demand eventually results in lower prices. The second tool is adjusting the discount rate, or the interest rate at which banks borrow from the Fed. Changes in this rate get passed along to the interest rates that individual borrowers have to pay as well. To increase supply and speed up, the Fed can lower the rate. Borrowing becomes cheaper. This encourages banks to borrow money, which they can then lend out to consumers and businesses leading to increased spending and investment. Think about it. Imagine your car needs repairs. Your friend suggests buying a new car instead of pouring more money into the old one. After all, interest rates are low, so car loans are cheap right now. What would you do? Well, there are good arguments for both options, but you're probably more likely to buy a new car while borrowing costs are lower than they would be otherwise, right? Likewise, businesses are more inclined to borrow for expansion, leading to more investments and job creation. To decrease supply and slow down, the Fed can increase the discount rate. By increasing the discount rate, borrowing becomes more expensive. This can lead to reduced borrowing and spending by consumers and businesses. The final tool the Fed has is called open market operations. This involves the buying and selling of government securities. What are government securities? They're essentially IOUs issued by the government. 
To increase the money supply and speed up, the Fed can buy government securities back, putting more money back in the hands of banks. Again, more money in the hands of banks should lead to more lending and more spending. To decrease supply and slow down, the Fed can sell more government securities, which takes money out of the banking system. Let's take a minute to recap what we've learned today. In the U.S., the Federal Reserve can help create and maintain a stable economy by regulating the banking system and providing for the secure and efficient movement of money. But sometimes the economy gets too far out of balance and requires further intervention. Whether speeding up or slowing down, the Federal Reserve can use monetary policy. When the Fed changes its monetary policy, it impacts our economy's speed. More money in circulation can spur growth, while less can slow things down to avoid overheating. In other words, to speed up the economy, the Fed can increase the money supply. To slow it down, the Fed can decrease supply. To achieve either of these goals, the Fed can change the reserve requirements, adjust interest rates, and buy or sell government securities. In this unit, we've looked at money, banks, and their role in economic growth. Now we've examined how the Fed can regulate banks and the money supply to help the economy. We've delved deep into how one country, the U.S., manages its money supply and banks. But nations around the world operate based on varied foundational economic principles. In our next unit, we will explore various economic systems, traditional command, market, and mixed economies. Each economic system offers its unique set of advantages, challenges, and operational dynamics. But until next time, this is B, reminding you to keep investing in your future one lesson at a time. I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.